Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Cabin Squirrel. You may have seen videos of me hand feeding my deer in the backyard, which is absolutely one of my favorite things in the world to do. But in addition to that, I also love to cook. Where I live, it's a pretty rural area, small town, and there's really not a lot of restaurants around here. And the ones that are around here, you have quite a drive to get to. So, and absolutely nobody will deliver food here. So it's pretty critical to be able to cook in this situation, um, which fortunately I love to do. So I got a barrel smoker a few years ago um, at a local shop and I've had so much fun with it. I've smoked all kinds of stuff on it, um, anywhere from vegetables to fish, meats, even pizza, um, and they all turned out amazing. Today I'm gonna show you how I smoke baby back ribs on a barrel smoker. Thanks in advance for watching and I hope you enjoy. First, I crumble up some newspaper, or in this case, I used paper bags, and put them at the bottom of the smoker, and then I added the wood on top. I usually like to use hickory or apple wood when I'm smoking ribs. Then we're gonna light the fire. I keep checking the fire to make sure that I don't need to add any more wood or paper, and make sure the fire hasn't gone out. Now we're gonna prep the ribs and get them ready to go on the smoker. I actually filmed this video last November and I'm just getting around to editing it now, so I don't know how accurate these prices are at this point, uh, but I did get the ribs at Walmart. I'm going to take the ribs out of the packages and then once I get that done, I'll take them over the sink and rinse them off. Next, we are going to remove this film from the back of the ribs. You can just kind of pull. At whatever point, you can get your fingers underneath here. I like to start in the middle somewhere because it's easier to pull off for me. And if you're lucky, it kind of stays together and comes off in one piece. Which this one is not going to do, obviously. Okay, and get it all the way to the edge so you can get all that stuff off. It's just not nice to bite into when you're biting into a rib. Sometimes if I loop it around my fingers, it comes off a little easier. Luckily, the other three were much easier to do than the first one was. Bummer. That's not gonna go well in the smoker, so I'm gonna throw that away. Now that I've cleaned up my cutting boards, we're gonna get these seasoned up. We're gonna use Sweet Money Championship Rub. This is made by Big Papa Smokers in Coachella, California, and it's one of my favorite rubs to use on ribs. First, we'll season the underneath side of the ribs, and I'm gonna do two at a time just to try and keep it a little less messy. And just sprinkle it on the ribs. I like to do both sides. I like the seasoning to be on both sides of the rib when I bite into it. Don't worry, I sanitized my spice bottle when I was done with this. Next thing I'm gonna do is take these and cut them each in half. I find that for my barrel smoker, it works out a little bit better to smoke them if they're cut in half. If I leave them full length and one side's going to get more done than the other, the side closest to the fire. So I find that they get a much even, much more even distribution of heat and smoke if I do this. And then I'm going to put them under there's, you can see where the bones are through here. I'm gonna put it, the hook through the meat underneath the first bone. Just press it through and then it's ready to hang on, ready to hang on the smoker. Okay, 
All right, this is what they look like now that they're all prepped and ready to go on the smoker. So I'm gonna go out and check the fire and see where we're at with things. Um, probably we'll need to add some charcoal and start soaking some applewood chunks to get a nice applewood smoke flavor on these babies. I used hickory wood in the smoker to get the fire started. Um, and I tried to pick pieces that had as little bark as possible. I kind of feel like the bark makes the fruits taste bitter. Um, and I, yeah, don't like that. So now I'm gonna move this around a little bit and put some lump charcoal on it so that I can make sure that the fire stays going long enough to smoke the ribs. I'm actually gonna go get another piece of hickory. I don't think it has quite enough in there yet, so I'll be right back. All right, we have a nice fire going in the smoker. I've got hickory in there. I added a couple more pieces to get the fire going a little bit more because I want it to last longer. I'm gonna smoke the ribs for three hours, so I wanna make sure that there's plenty of natural coals from the wood before I add the lump charcoal. And then after that, I will add some apple wood chunks that I've soaked in water so they don't go up in flames and uh, they'll help add some nice apple wood smokiness to the ribs. This is just my ash bucket that I use for the pizza oven. So I just put a bunch of applewood chunks in here and some warm water. You can tell because it's kind of steamy. It's freezing out here right now. And uh, those are going to go in the smoker right before I put the ribs on. With the barrel smoker, these pieces of rebar are how I hang the ribs. So they are going to go through these holes that you can see in the top of the smoker. Um, from one side to the other, I'll show you later. And the hooks just hang over the top of those and the ribs hang down into the smoker. All right, I'm gonna move this wood around here in the fire and get it ready for charcoals. I really should have enough glove on for this. This is freaking hot. Ah. I'm gonna go get my F glove. <laughs> I'll be back. Alright, I'm back with the other glove. I don't know what I was thinking. I already burned myself on this thing one time. I'm gonna move the wood around. Get ready to put the lump charcoal in here. dropping pieces in where there's a gap. But not too many. I put out the fire a few times by putting too much charcoal in. So you wanna watch that. And watch your eyes, cause it's super smoky. It kinda burns. All right, I'm gonna call that good. And at this point, I'm gonna put the lid on. First, I'll put the rebars through. So that you can see how those go in. that'll allow the flames to stop and the smoking to start. Once we get to that point, I'll open it back up and add some applewood chunks and close it back up again for the smoke to develop a little further. And then after that, I'm gonna put these ribs on.
It's starting to work. I'll show you what it looks like. The flames are gone. They'll start back up eventually if I leave this lid off. Here they are, long enough. <coughs> Smoking nicely. <coughs> Okay, before I put the wood chunks in, the soaked apple wood chunk skin, I wanted to show you this. This says Barbecuer's Delight. It's a little cast iron thing that I like to put apple juice in and put it in the smoker. I usually leave the lid off, um, or at least cracked open a little bit. It's pretty hot in there, so I don't know how I'm gonna, how this is gonna work out, but we'll see. Um, usually I like to put it in first and then pour because if I try and put it in with liquid in it, it usually doesn't go well. So I'll take this off and let the smoke calm down a little bit. or something. cast iron thing down. Well, the smoker part is working great, but I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna say good enough. I'm trying to pour off all the juice in this thing, so we'll see. Okay, I can tell I got some in there. I was just kind of winging it, hoping for the best. And it looks like there is actually some apple juice in there. So at this point, I'm gonna put some of these chunks of apple wood in that have been soaking. All right, I'm just gonna add four pieces for right now. And then we'll check on this periodically as they're smoking and put some more chunks on if we need to. So now we'll go ahead and put the ribs on. These hooks just hang over the rebar. All right, now we're gonna put the lid back on and let them smoke away. So we'll come back and check these every half hour to hour. I can look through the window to make sure that there's still smoke coming through the holes. So yeah, we'll check on them in a bit. All right, we're gonna check these out. It's been about an hour since we put the ribs on. So I'm just gonna open the lid up. They're 
coming along nicely. I don't think I need to add anything at this point. So we will keep an eye on them through the window like we have been and uh, come back out and check them in another half hour to hour. Well, it's getting quite a bit darker now and I don't see a whole bunch of smoke coming out of here at this point. So out here to check the ribs. They've been in for about an hour and a half, I think. So I'm planning on another hour and a half. So let's take a look. Oh, we've still got some smoke. Good. The coals are looking good. I'm gonna add a couple more pieces of the apple wood. that'll start generating a little bit more smoke. There we go. All right, we'll come back out and check them in a little bit. Well, I ended up not coming out for a minute to check on this. Um, last time I checked it, it looked like there was gonna be plenty of smoke. Uh, there were still some coals in there that were pretty hot, so I wasn't really worried that I was gonna run out of heat for these things, so. We are gonna open this up. It's really dark at this point. It's, uh, it's about quarter after seven. Um, so these have been in here for about three hours now. So I am going to take the lid off. We'll check them out. Still plenty of smoke in there. And now, now it's time to get them off of here and take them inside and wrap them in foil. So I've got this little tool. It's got a little hook on it. This is how I get the ribs out of here. So just hook on, bring it up, looking pretty good. So this is the pile of ribs that we have. That's four racks that I cut in half, each of them. Um, still plenty of smoke coming off of the smoker, so that was definitely not a worry. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on this and it'll burn out throughout the night. And I'm gonna take these ribs inside, but I'm gonna stop filming now so I don't drop them all over the place. Well, we had successful transport, so that's a good thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these up and then we'll put them in an oven at 225 for two hours. Let's wrap them up like this. So that the pieces stay inside, and then just place them on the sheet here. That just doesn't look good. Just take that off.
So half of them I wrapped to where the meat's going to be on the bottom, um, which I think is probably going to be a better situation. So I think I might rewrap these. So. The ribs are wrapped and they're ready to go in the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop them in there. And we'll check back in about two hours to see how they look. All right, so we left the ribs in the oven for two hours at 225 and pulled them out. They've been sitting out and resting for an hour. And now I'm getting ready some food saver bags because I'm going to suck each one of these individually and put them in the freezer so that we can eat them later. All right, the smoking part is done. The oven part is done. Resting them for an hour is done. So now I've got them all unwrapped and I've got my food saver bags ready. I made eight of these to suck each of these in. When I say suck, that means suck them in the food saver bag, just to clarify. Um, so now I want to cut into one of these. Let's see. We'll go with this one. I want to cut into it and check out what kind of smoke ring we have going on here. So. Whoa. So that's what they look like inside. I think it's a fairly decent smoke ring. I had a little nibble uh, before I started filming and there is some lovely smokiness. So I think these are gonna be good. Um, what I'm gonna do now is suck these in the food saver bags and we're gonna call it a night. I was hoping that we would have these for dinner tonight, but obviously now that it's 10 to 11, kind of past our dinner time, so um, I'm gonna get these ready and put them in the fridge. And a lot of them are gonna go in the freezer, but we're gonna have these for dinner tomorrow night. So when we do that, I will show you what we do on the grill um, and what the final product looks like. All right, the ribs are officially sucked in food saver bags. So I've got eight portions here. That's really enough for eight dinners around here unless we have friends over. So anyway, I just wanted to show you what they look like before I put them in the fridge and go chill. So I will see you back when we're ready to eat them. So I just took two of these portions out we're gonna just rib out tonight, so um, these are gonna go on the grill pretty quick here, and I'll take you out there with me and show you what we're doing. It was really windy when I went out to cook the ribs, so I'm just gonna do a voiceover for this part. So I've got the Big Papa Sweet Money that I'm gonna season the ribs with on the grill. I put the seasoning on the meat side and put them on the grill and then season the back side. Now we're going to flip the ribs over. And at this point we're really just warming them up because they were pre-cooked in the smoker. Now we'll pour a little sauce on the ribs. I like to use the Famous Dave's Sweet and Zesty Sauce. So we're gonna pour a little sauce on the ribs and use our basting brush to spread the sauce out. And I like to try and get it on the sides of the ribs too. Now we're back to flip the ribs over. At this point, we're trying to caramelize the sauce. 
So we're going to put a little bit of sauce on the back side, baste it around. Now we'll flip them back over and caramelize the sauce on the underneath side of the ribs. Now our ribs are ready to pull off the grill. Normally I would have put this pan in the grill to warm it up, um, but it was too cold that night. So I put the ribs on that pan and then transferred them to another pan when I got in the house so that they didn't conduct the cold and cool down too quickly. All right, these are the finished product uh, straight off the grill on a different pan so they don't get cold too fast while I'm plating. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and plate dinner up and then I'll show you what that looks like after. All right, and how we have the final, final, final finished product. So this is what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. So the coleslaw I made, um, if you're interested in the recipe, please let me know in the comments and I would be happy to share. If you're seeing this part of the video, then either you fast forwarded through the video and you're watching this part now, or you actually made it through the video and you're watching the end. In either case, thank you so much. I really appreciate you watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and check out my channel for other videos. Thank you so much. See ya.